Uh, you know, once in a while, I like to pass the mic to our brothers and sisters who are leading labor unions around the country. And Ken Rig Maiden is one of those guys. Uh, I caught up with him to do this recorded interview when he was attending a, a conference of the Coalition of Black Trade Unionists. So we talk about that, uh, rebuilding the labor movement using new models, the immigration reform that's coming up, and uh, other issues. So check this interview out, and we'll be right back. And this is Ken Rig Maiden. He is president of the International Union of Painters and Allied Trades. I'd like to start out, if you don't mind, by talking to us about uh, the Coalition of, of Black Trade Unionists Convention. One of the things that I, I've done career with, with the IUPAT and organized labor in general is uh, worked with constituency groups. One of the things that we've learned over the years is that our workforce demographic changes or the, the demographic of our nation changes, and we have to make sure that opportunities are presented to everybody because you never know where a leader is going to come from. You never know where that good mechanic is going to come from, that good trainer that good instructor, all of those things. And the AFL-CIO has partnership with about seven uh, constituency groups, of which one is the Coalition of Black Trade Union. And uh, I serve on their executive council and uh, certainly use that as a platform to create opportunities for people from diverse communities. In, in terms of, of, of the political dynamic of the Coalition of Black Trade Unionists within the labor movement, what is the main mission and goal of the coalition? The main mission and goal of the coalition is to link strongly and maintain a strong bond between people of color and the labor movement at large. We, we've learned as a movement that trying to get folks involved you have to be with them. You have to work with them. Uh, in the Coalition of Black Trade Unionists, the Labor Council for Latin American Advancement, uh, the Asian Pacific Labor Alliance, uh, those constituency groups and others work well with organized labor uh, in total. And we think that part of that is by having these constituency groups where folks can have their voice heard. On the political front, of course, we're trying to make sure that the needs of organized labor in general meet the needs of these various constituencies. And we've done a pretty good job. I mean, if, if we go to the election in 2012 when President Obama was reelected, if it not were for Latinos, African American, Asian American, we wouldn't have been able to push President Obama over the top for a second term. So I think the proof is really in the kind of work we've done and working together as constituencies uh, to comp to accomplish that goal. Yeah, and it's very important for these constituencies, obviously, to c continue to agitate and organize and advocate uh, f for for people of color within the labor movement and uh, and elsewhere as well. But uh, the labor movement in general is also facing some huge challenges, and the AFL-CIO is talking about new models of uh, trying to organize workers and trying to establish uh, labor power and trying to grow the labor movement. What do you think is the, the most important thing about that effort to get new models of organizing because uh, the labor movement has got to be able to grow if it's going to thrive and if we're going to see an agenda that's positive. You know, you're absolutely right about that. I'll use my union as, as an example. And since the, the recession began in 2000, and late 2007, our membership dropped nearly 20,000. I mean, almost like a stone uh, within a period of about a year and a half. We were down like that. Now, we've been fortunate in maintaining where we are for the last four years, but it's been a very much of a struggle to do that. We also know that the ways that we did things can't remain static. We know that, as I said earlier, when you talk about the demographic of the, the country changing with the country becoming, if you will, more brown, we have to make sure that we're there for those communities to create new plans, new programs to to reach them and to maintain our relevance. Strong example, case in point, is in building trades unions, we have a lot of what you call project labor agreements. A lot of these project labor agreements are done in areas of redevelopment, areas where there's communities of color, disparate groups of folks, and yet when you go on the job site 10 years ago, you wouldn't see 
people who looked or resembled the community at large where the work was being done. In the political realm of things, trying to be able to get permitting done, to get developers in, to make sure that the the community or the, the governing agency would allow this work to be done, we knew that we had to make sure that we reached the diverse groups in the community. In other words, we wanted to be a partner and need to be a partner where we work and live. And, and as I said, as the membership has changed and become more diverse, it resonates very well with our membership. It also is the right thing to do to create opportunity for all. The next question I've got has to do with the building trades uh, and, and an issue with the Affordable Care Act. There is a concern about the Affordable Care Act's uh, impact on multi-employer health insurance plans. And I know that some unions, including some building trades unions, are, are concerned about it and have been trying to get a fix um, implemented uh, so it doesn't end up damaging these plans. Because I know in general, the labor movement has supported the Affordable Care Act. Um, do you have any comment from your perspective as president of IUP about the possible impact of the Affordable Care Act on these multi-employer health care plans. I've listened to people talk about the plan and the, the possible impact it could have. It's my understanding that the administration, now I may not agree with it, I would have preferred a plan put together, locked down solid, and, and we, we knew what we were getting. I'm looking at the plan right now, even though the legislation has been approved, is that it's still a work in progress. Our legislative department is working tirelessly on Capitol Hill, making sure that we're staying on top of what's going on with the legislation. How is it going to come down? How is it going to impact? I've heard the, the, the details about or the stories, I'll say, about the negative impact that it'll have on, quote, unquote, the types of plans, joint labor management negotiated plan being a, being negative. We're trying to be prepared for that situation if it arises, but we are taking a proactive wait and see attitude just to see how it shakes out. Uh, the administration has been talking with us, uh, organized labor, and d- dialogue is going on. I can't tell you I know where that dialogue is going, but certainly being able to discuss and express our concerns and the things that matter to us, particularly with building trades, is prominent. But another issue that's really important to building trades, and, and as well as the entire labor movement, is immigration reform. As a construction trades, building trades union, as you watch this immigration reform bill, uh, are you fairly confident that it will keep your support as it moves through the Senate in, in terms of what it will do, uh, trying to be fair to both immigrant workers, uh, trade union members, and American workers all at the same time? I, I am confident in that immigration comes in all colors. And we need to be aware of what goes on with immigrants. And and one of the most powerful statements I heard is the comment was made, if you as an American citizen need an immigrant, they're your employee. When the immigrant needs you to help them with their right to citizenship, they're alien. When you talk about me as a building tradesman, those are some of the challenges that we faced. How do you incorporate the immigration rules that need to be changed, need to be modified, to be acceptable to all. We're okay, again, with the negotiations that are going on. Senator Schumer has worked very well with the building trades in particular in looking at things, and and I'm going to call it, for lack of a better term right now, the W visa, which would put a cap on the amount of workers for our specific industry, regulation that will allow for us to be recognized as working folks and that the workers will have a shot at the jobs before the floodgates, so to speak, are open. That was Ken Rigg Maiden. He is president of the International Union of Painters and Allied Trades. You're listening to The People's Mic with Doug Cunningham on the mic, 92.1 FM, Madison's Progressive Talk. Come to the end of another show. And we depend on listener support. So if you want to support us, step up at laborradio.org, hit that donate button, give what you can afford, and it will uh, help us to keep doing what we're doing here on The People's Mic with Doug Cunningham and with Workers Independent News. Also, another.